everybody. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. So let's go through this question. Then we'll go back and answer some of the other ones as well. But I'll, this one is going to be in depth, like the first, like the question we did on Wednesday. And um, so I asked for the correct reagents. Uh, it asked for the starting materials. It asked for uh, the type of substitution, whether it's SN1 or SN2. And also gives a hand about the stereochemistry. And then it asked for an energy diagram to go from the alcohol to the alcohol halide. So we kind of did, we did that Wednesday. We're going to do it again with this reaction right here. And so let's jump in. First question, what reagents are we going to use here? Look at your alcohol. Think the strategy is the same. What type of alcohol is it? First of all, that's the first question you want to ask. Is it primary? Is it secondary? Or is it tertiary? That's the first question. Second question, what tools do I have to convert primaries and secondaries? What tools do I have to convert tertiaries? So what type of alcohol is, is the alcohol if it in C? Don't all answer at once now. Well, I don't want to break the internet. Would it be secondary? It is secondary. Okay. Why, why do you sound unsure? No, because I was trying to uh, remember if we... Uh, counted the carbons that are connected to the alcohol or how many carbons were connected to the carbon on the yeah, alcohol, so if that makes let sense. Me, let me, yeah, it makes sense. Let me let me clear that up. That's a good question. So right here, this carbon where the alcohol is, is called a carbonyl uh, alcohol. Right? So that carbon, you, you want to look at what's connected to it. So you got a carbon on the left, and a carbon on the right. So those two carbons are, that well, those carbons, they're two carbons. So that makes it secondary, right? If, it, if there was only one carbon connected to it, it would be primary. <laughs> if there are three carbons connected to it, then it is tertiary, if that makes sense. So you always look at the carbon where the alcohol is, and then you look at the carbons that are attached to that carbon. And that'll tell you whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. So we know it's secondary. Now, what tools do we have in our toolbox? We've got three tools that we can use to convert this alcohol into an alcohol halide. So what tools do we have to convert this alcohol alcohols into alkyl bromides? Because that's what we have on the other side. Anybody? Sorry, can you repeat that? My connection went out because I'm driving. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... What what tools do we have to convert that alcohol into an alkyl bromide? We got a bromine with that. We substituted the OH with a bromine. Now, it's a secondary alcohol. So, in theory, two tools that we can use. Somebody tell me one of them. Um, HX. Okay, we could. H HBR, we could use that. All right, so let, let, let's do this in the, uh, I'm going to put it here in the box, H, B, R, or what's the other tool we could use? Well, we're going to rule out one of them. So I, I, I'm glad you said HX because we're gonna, we, we have a definitive way to rule one of these two tools out. What's the other tool if I want to convert alcohol into a bromide? I wish I had a cricket sound effect. We only have three reactions that we've studied. HX, addition to alcohols, thionyl chloride, addition to alcohols, and what's the last one? It should be in your notes. Like EBR3. EBR3. Good. So you can use either or. All right. Now here's the here's the way we can pick. On this example, if you notice in the starting alcohol, right? If you notice in the starting alcohol, 
What's the stereochemistry of that carbon, that chiral center? Because that is a chiral center right there. What's the stereochemistry? Is it wedged or is it dashed? Can you make that out on wedged. your side? Let me help you. It look it. It may just be that the resolution is bad. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I won't hold that against y'all. That's my fault. I'm gonna zoom in so I can uh, so I can kind of clean that up. So it's actually dashed. Does that help? Yes. Yeah. So it's actually uh, it's dashed. So is the other group at the bottom too. Fix that one up too. So both of these are actually both of those stereo centers are dashed. Uh, can somebody tell me what the configuration is of that stereo center? Uh, and I'm I'm not asking this just for for triviality. It it all ties back to which reaction we're going to use. So can somebody tell me what the configuration is? If it's R or S? I think it's S. Because I know the hydrogen is wedged away. pointing at us. Yep. Well, no, it's pointing away from us. It's it's on a dash. That's why I put the little white lines in so you can tell that it's dashed. Oh, okay. Great. So let, let's prioritize it real quick. Because this is a, I mean, this is coming up on the test too. So you can't get away from stereochemistry. Let's, let's prioritize it. Oxygen is one. Everybody agree? compared to the two carbons and what's missing, but you know it's there and you know where it's pointed. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. And it's on a wedge, right? Yes. Okay, so let's, let me put that in right quick. So there's a hydrogen here. All right. We know that's four. What's two? between those two carbons, the one to the left and to the right. The one, the to one the that's right. more, it's more good. The one that's more substituted. So that's two. And then that by default that's three. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Hmm? So is that R or S? Because it looks like it's clockwise, doesn't it? If I count to three, isn't that clockwise? Yes. So what is the configuration at that stereo center? It's S. It's S. Because it's clockwise, but the H is wedged, so we have to reverse it. So I agree that 100%. So that's S. Now let's go on the other side and see if we can do that configuration. The bromine is actually on a wedge. Hopefully that resolution is not bad, but let me fix the other group so you can see the difference. Right. So what's the configuration of where the bromine is? Because now hydrogen is actually going back. This one would be yeah. R because you don't have to reverse it. And Come the on. other two carbons Come on, are the Rhea. same. Come on, Rio. It is R. What happened? Let's look. At, let's go back to here. We said the alcohol itself is S. The uh, alcohol halide is R. So what happened to the stereochemistry? Did it reverse? Did it get inverted? Is it the same? It's not the same, is it? No, it reversed. Yeah. So we call we call this where your stereochemistry gets uh we call it inversion. So version of stereochemistry. This is very important. If you do a substitution reaction and the stereochemistry gets inverted, there's got to be SN2. Are y'all following? Yes. That's a key, key characteristic of an SN2 substitution is inversion of stereochemistry. Anytime you do SN2, it's, I'll, I'll show you why too in a minute. We might as well just take the time that we have and we're going to work 
beat this problem to death because the other ones are just putting in the reagents. So it's not a not an issue. And then we got one more problem that we're going to work through on Monday and then figure out when we, we want to take that exam. All right. So anytime you do SN2 substitution, you get inversion of stereochemistry. That's how you that's how you can tell that SN2 happened. If the substitution happens on a chiral center, it's going to be inverted. So if it happens at a chiral center, it's going to invert with an SN2. That's sloppy. Sorry. So if it's SN2, you get inversion. Now, look at our two sets of reagents. Which one are you going to pick? Knowing that it's SN2 and not SN1. Right. If I BBR. use H, good, excellent. If I use HBR, what does that mean? It means that the mechanism is going to be what? Go back, flip back in your notes real quick and look at that first reaction we studied and tell me what the, what the mechanism was for the substitution step. It's SN1 with a carbocation. SN1 with a carbocation intermediate. Excellent. So this reaction, we want to use PBR3. And that's just based on what we see because we have the product. So we know that it wasn't SN1. So we know we wouldn't use HBR. But we do know that PBR3, we said that the other day in class, that PBR3, the mechanism involves the substitution step is SN2. All right. Questions about that? A ask anything you want to ask. Okay. So I think for me in my head, before I realized the SN1, SN2 thing, I was confused mm -hmm. because I remember when we did PBR3 last time, we ended mm -hmm. with like um, the, uh, I think the, the, the ring with three. Um, yeah. Yeah. Alcohol. So, so I was wondering like, how did that work? How do we, well, okay. So the, the question as is written, we can just we can just write PBR three, but you know, if you want to uh clarify, we can put a three right here and say we started with three moles of this. That would that would give it away for sure though. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. But we can start with we can write that in, but the stoichiometry can be written in. But Typically, when you do the when you do PBR three as a reagent, you don't have to. Uh, how do I put this? It's understood that the ratio is three to one. But on an exam, if I was just saying if it was just like a multiple choice question, without having to think about the mechanism, then I would write it with the stoichiometry, so it's easier to pick that up. But if it's a, a more involved question like this one, then I would leave it out because the stereochemistry also gives it away, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about this? All right. What's the second part of this question? We got the reagent. We went through all the spiel about the stereochemistry and inversion where it went from S to R. Uh, we talked about the substitution, and this was a a hint that you can use the product stereochemistry in some, that's a typo, in some cases. All right. So now we know it's SN2. We know that we're going to use PBR3. Now we need to draw the energy diagram. All right. And we're only going to do this for one iteration. So one mole of PBR3 and one mole of alcohol. So let's do that. There's, there's something, did somebody just put something in the chat? Tell I, me, I just put a group me. Oh, okay. A study, y'all studying together. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look how God works. So I want to talk about the inversion part first before we do the mechanism. And so if you remember from part one, Mm 
right? For SN1, you have, we're just going to use a tertiary. Your leaving group, right? The leaving group leaves. Hold up. Right, you get a carbon cation, and then your nuclear file comes in and attacks that. So then you get your that you have your substitution product. Right, if if, if the reaction is SN two, what do we say? I, what what do we call this? The substitution step where you have a intermediate prior to the product forming. What do we call that? What's the term we use to describe it? I'm sorry, can you say it again? The term that we use to describe a reaction that goes through an intermediate, uh, or a mechanism that goes through an intermediate, like this carbocation, a substitution that goes through an intermediate. We called it something. Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Usher. What's that? I'm sorry. Wrong analogy. <laughs> The wrong analogy is not is not a concerted. What's the other? What's the alternative to being concerted? Why? We said it stepwise, right? For SN two, it's the opposite. The only thing I hate about word using word like this. All right. So if it's SN2, it's going to be a little bit different, right? So it's not stepwise, it's concerted. So if I have a, let me just uh, use a primary carbon. If I have a primary carbon with my leaving group, right, and a nucleophile coming in, The nucleophile is actually going to attack opposite of where the leaving group is. It's going to say LG, right? So in, in reality, this is happening all at the same time. So here's your nucleophile. Here's the carbon where your leaving group is. You've got a hydrogen here, one here. And then your chain, I'll just write that like that, right? So what do, what do we call in G, organic part one? What do we call uh, a species like this where you got a partially broken bond to the leaving group and a partially formed bond between the carbon and the nucleophile? Anybody remember? It's at the top, top of your uh, energy diagram, at the top of the or the curve, right? This is this is what the transition state looks like for an SN2 substitution. The nucleophile is coming in at the same time the leaving group is leaving. So we said it is, it is concerted. Everything is happening <clears throat> all at the same time. Right, Qu questions about that. So this is why the stereochemistry gets inverted because the nucleophile always comes in from the opposite side of, of where your leaving group is. Right, so always attacks opposite of where the leaving group is leaving from. So that's why you see inversion. That's why the SN2 happens with inversion. Same way, same pathway every time. Nucleophile is coming from one side, Leaving group is leaving from the other side. So that's why you all, that's why you can look at a, a product and look at the stereochemistry. And if it's inverted, then you know it happened by an SN2 mechanism. All right. Questions about, about this reaction before we do the energy diagram. All right.
So let's let's think about this. Somebody look back in your notes and tell me how many steps there are to this reaction. Was it four? Was it four? What's the first step? Wait, is it the same? I might have to go back and look. I didn't go back and look first. Is it the same where it like starts with the the proton transfer or is this something different? Oh, this reaction doesn't start with a proton transfer. Oh, okay. It actually starts with the hydroxide or the alcohol attacking uh, phosphorus and you lose bromine. Is that right? So let's think about it. So we'll do the mechanism again and then so I'm going to just draw, redraw this alcohol. Where's it here? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Hmm? Plus P. Let me just write this out. Br3. So step one, this is attacking phosphorus and you're going to lose a bromine. Is that right? Isn't that what's in the mechanism? Yes. So you end up with an intermediate that looks like this. And I know this is a lot to write, so just follow it first and then. So this is P. PR, PR, and then hydrogen is still here. Oxygen is positive, and this is plus BR minus. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then in the next step, bromine simply, this is the substitution step, right? Bromine simply attacks. Sorry about that. Bromine attacks here. And then you lose that because this is your leaving group, right? This whole piece. That's your leaving group. And the whole purpose of the first step is to get oxygen to be a better leaving group or OH to be a better leaving group. So that attacks, and then you lose your leaving group. So now you're left with this as a product. Right now, bromine is on the wedge. This is still pre-existing stereo center, still on a dash, plus P, O, H, B, R, 2, like that. All right, so that's uh, that's only two steps. Is that right? Yes, that looks right. Hmm? You said it looks right. <laughs> it might be right. Might not be right. Yeah, who, who knows? Right. All right. So if we wanted to draw the energy diagram, how many humps would it have? Because every <laughs> every curve represents uh, a step in the reaction. Is that right? Yeah, so we have three um, three peaks and two transition states, right? Well, let's, let's go back and look. How many steps do we have? We got step one, attack of the alcohol on PBR3, and then step two, loss of, well, attack of bromine on that intermediate. So that's only two steps. Is that right? Yeah. So let's let me let me draw it out. So let's look at it. We got a. Uh, this is my. I'm just gonna abbreviate it. Energy, time. So the first step is is probably pretty fast, right? Because the phosphorus oxygen oxygen bond is really strong. The PBR bond is weak, 
And so you're replacing a weak bond with a strong bond. So we can assume that that first step is highly exothermic, right? So this is the starting materials, the alcohol plus the PBR3, right? The intermediate is this group right here. We're going to label them as this will be a, this will be B, and then the product we'll call it C, right? So the intermediate is B. Now, that doesn't mean it's SN1 because the intermediate has nothing. The substitution is not happening uh, on the intermediate. The, the substitution, it, the intermediate is the substitution start material. So making that intermediate doesn't mean that it, the mechanism is SN1 because the intermediate itself, how do we substitute for that oxygen in, in step two? What did we do? Did we lose it first and make a carbocation or did it all happen in a concerted fashion? Right. Think about it. Did the, did the substitution part happen with the enemy? Is there another intermediate that's between B and C? No. No. So that's how you that's how you know. I mean, re, all, a lot a lot of reactions have intermediates, but that substitution step where bromine swaps out for the leaving group, there's no intermediate there. So that's how we can still say that it's SN two. The presence of an intermediate doesn't mean that it's SN one, if unless there's an intermediate between the starting materials and the products of the substitution step. If, if that makes sense. So I don't want to confuse you because we keep saying there's no intermediate for SN2. All reactions have intermediates, unless it's just one step. If it's multiple steps, you're going to have intermediates. But, but if the substitution part, which is this part, right, if that doesn't contain an intermediate, then it's SN2. It's got to be SN2. All right, so we're going to have one more. That's probably exothermic too, <laughs> because even though you break a CO bond, you're making a PO bond, and that's a really, really strong bond. Um, so then we go from A, which is our star materials, to the intermediate B, which we have up here, and then that bromine attacks that intermediate in a concerted fashion, right, to give us the products C. Can so let's do this. Let's see if we can. Um, calculate the delta H for that step, for that substitution step, and see if it's exo or endothermic. So I need somebody who's already like texting your best friend to Google <laughs> the bond bond strength for a phosphorus oxygen single bond. Phosphor phosphorus oxygen single bond. What is the bond strength for that bond? And then I need somebody to to Google the bond strength for CO, carbon oxygen, single bond. Just type that in, carbon oxygen, single bond strength. And you can do the same thing for phosphorus. Phosphorus, oxygen, single bond strength. And tell me what you get. And it doesn't matter if it's kilojoules or kilocalories. You can use either or, as long as both are the same. For the carbon oxygen single bond, I got it gave me three five eight kilojoules. So we that so since we started in kilojoules, let's stay there. So CO said three fifty eight. Yes. Kilojoules per mole. All right. What about phosphorus oxygen? Anybody got that? Yes. Two on one single bond has a bond strength in range of five hundred to six hundred. So let's just say let's let's uh estimate on the high end and say six hundred. So word. So P O single bond is six hundred kilojoules per mole. Is that right? Now we also made a bond. We made a CBR bond. Is that right? Can y'all see that? 
a Burmian came in and attacked where the leaving group is and replaced it. So we made that bond too. So how much is that worth? A carbon bromine single bond. <clears throat> Anybody. It should be 200 and something, I think. Anybody have it? Carbon bromine single bond strength. Two hundred seventy-five kilojoules per mole. Right. Let's put that in. So two two seventy-five kilojoules per mole. This is going to be highly exothermic. So bond. It, it is typically. The bond's broken the way you calculate delta H. Bonds broken minus bonds formed. And if you broke more than one bond, you just sum them up. So what did we break? We broke a CO. Is that right? Single bond? Yes. We only broke that. Is that right? And then we made a PO single bond and a CBR single bond. So I'm just going to add them together. 875. Say I need to save space. Do 600 and 275, the units, kilojoules per mole. Somebody do that math right quick and subtract those two. Tell me what you get. It's going to be a big negative number. I can tell you that much. It's like 3 or 417, something like that. Negative 517. Negative 517. That is like an atomic bomb. <laughs> well, not quite, but that's a highly, highly, highly exothermic reaction. So we could even make this curve shorter for the activation energy for that second step. It's probably going to be so fast, compared, especially compared to the first step, um, because of what, because of that enthalpy, that <clears throat> negative, in, that negative delta H. That means that reaction is super fast. It's almost spontaneous. Um, so, back to the original point about the energy diagram. Right, both steps are. Or typical or probably exothermic. We made a PO and then we broke a PBR, which is a much weaker bond. So we can assume that they're both exothermic, but that second step is going to be really rapid <laughs> because that PO bond is going the formation of that PO bond is going to drive it. It's going to be really, really fast. Right? So that's the energy diagram. And we calculated the enthalpy for the second step going from B to C. Um, and we know that the reaction is SN2. I'm going to come back to that page, too, because I know somebody's still writing. Uh, well, we said that the reaction is SN2 because of the stereochemistry being inverted. And then we compare SN1 and SN2 and talked about why inversion happened, right? Because the nucleophile attacks opposite of where the leaving group is. And then down here, we did our energy, constructed our energy diagram for that reaction. So for A and C, it was like the same uh, process. That go through, draw the products, pick the right reagents, and then draw the energy diagram. All right, questions about that? The, the other hard, hard question on this packet we'll do on Monday because uh, it involves a rearrangement. So we're going to talk about that too, which is, I think we'll get a lot out of out of that. Any other questions about anything? Or anybody still writing that? I'm I'm going to post this also, and I'll post the notes from uh, Wednesday too. I'll do both of them today. All right, no questions. We all good. <clears throat>